okay, so um, you know the, the word the word that has um, um, you know come up repeatedly is you know disparagement and uh, defamation of character of um, people vying for political position and all of that. Now we need to look at it from a number of perspectives. You know, in addition to what the erudite doc you know has has just said, and I must say that his, his submissions are very much on point. You know, what he said you know is the truth, and I would just like to add to what he's been saying so far, you know, just from another um, perspective. Now, historically, historically, when you when you look at um, issues related to media and uh, information dissemination and media reporting and all of that, there used to be a time when there was a global concern that if media is left only to the government or the state agencies, you know, information is left only to the government or state agencies to share to the public, it is going to be very skewed to just, you know, what the, the, the people in political office would want you to know. And to a certain extent, it was an attack on the freedom, you know, or an independence of the media. Now, I'll also have you know that when we speak of the freedom of expression, of which the freedom of press is an integral part. You know, it is a fundamental right. It is a fundamental right, you know, and in the process, information have got to be shared. Now, I mean, um, you, you may not have been born at that time, like you were saying, but you remember, and I know that the erudite dog will remember, people like Delegiwa, you know, um, yeah. Gadifa with me, um, um, I think it was uh, Anthony and Nahor. There are so many people that took up the responsibility of sharing information. Okay, Newswatch magazine, um, Tell magazine, you know, there were private magazines that were sharing information that the state institutions would never share. And in the process, uh, Nigerian people became more informed, more critical thinkers, more generational thinkers, and got more involved, you know, in, in issues of state. Because now they were looking at things from various perspectives, apart from you know the information that the state um, media institutions were sharing, and so there's an advantage that is associated with it. The second thing I'd like to say, you know, um, if, with regards to the disparagement we've been talking about and the media, is that you know editorial opinion is a fundamental right. Editorial opinion is freedom of expression. And you see, we're talking about people that are knowledgeable in their field. They know how to gather data, they know how to bring the information together, and they know how to articulate it for the consumption, you know, of their readers, of listeners, of the watchers, or the viewers, as it were. And so it's it, it's it's a it's a right, okay. And remember that in 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 them positioning themselves to share that information, the the consumer of the information also has the right to receive information that is accurate. All these things are, you know, are issues of media and media practice. Having said that, we need to know that when an information is shared, the mere fact that it expresses somebody's incompetence does not make it a disparaging statement. It is a revelation of whether or not that person is able to do the job. And that is the only way to do it. And so the people in the media share the information. You know, of course, like Doc said, there are some private media that are now used, you know, to disseminate, you know, the wrong information in the in the name of propaganda. Propaganda seems to be an accepted practice now. You know, so the private there are private institutions that do that. And there are two things you can do, okay, in the realm of media law to deal with this. You can write that media house and, and you know, say what you said about me is, is not true. And they will give you space for a rejoinder. The second thing you, you, you can do is actually ask them to do it, you know, for a public apology. Whereupon, if they do not do that, you can actually bring an action in defamation and you will win. There are so many cases, you know, in the Nigerian polity where so many people have, you know, brought in actions for defamation and they won. You know, and, and people were made to pay huge sums of money in damages, you know, because this is not a, a, a legal uh, class or something. We don't have to be making references to those cases. But the fundamental thing here is, is, is that freedom of expression is a fundamental right. 
okay, recognized by the United Nations Declaration of Human Rights, you know, the UN Charter, the African Charter, it is a fundamental right. And freedom of press is an integral part of that right. And so when the information is being shared, um, as long as as long as it is not a lie, the problem is when it becomes a lie. OK, as long as it is not a lie, it is information that empowers the voter or the electorate to make the right decisions. Finally, even when we speak of um, social media, you know, back in the days when social media did not have control and all of that, you know, um, people were using it carelessly. But these days, and I can say for a fact that in the last five to 10 years, people are not as careless as they used to be on social media, because now they know that once, you know, you're using your name, or even if you're not using your name, if you can be traced, and now you can be traced just through technology, you can be traced as the owner of that handle or the one that shared that information. And you can be, you know, you can be taken on by the person that you have you know, insulted or whose character you have defamed. A case in point is, is what we just talked about, you know, about um, the wife of, of the, the, the president, you know, bringing an action against a young man, you know, that talked about her on Twitter. Now, we, we need to know that it is the responsibility of the information consumer, even when it comes through traditional media, to make sure that the information is verified. We've had situations where even traditional media shared the wrong information. You know, they shared information about people's deaths. Doc, you remember when a media house talked about the death of Dr. Namdi Azikiwe when he was still alive? You know, there was also a media house that talked about the death of uh, the former head of state, uh, Ibrahim Badamosi Babangida. And the man, the man is still alive as we speak. You know, and these were traditional media, but immediately, you know, they, they took caution and they did the right thing. There was also a time when the National Media Commission had to shut down some 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 outfits, traditional media outfits because of things like this. OK, so so the, the issue is is all over, but the information consumer has the responsibility of verifying the information that he has received. It is a responsibility, you know, so before you share information, whether you're getting it through traditional media, you know, or mainstream media or through social media, make sure you verify the information. It's a responsibility.